Welcome to the Strength for the Day podcast, which is a daily Bible study with Dennis Fountain. We hope this time together will be challenging, sharpening, uplifting, encouraging, and strengthening to your Christian walk. Thank you for joining us, and we pray you are helped through today's study. Hey, happy Thursday, and welcome to another episode of Strength for the Day. Um, this episode will be dropping on Thursday, July 18th, 2024, and I hope that your week is going well and that you are just moving forward for the Lord for us at our church. Uh, today, tonight, starts our uh, men and boys camp out, and uh, looking forward to being up with our men in the Leavenworth area. We're going to have a great couple of days together, be challenged by God's word together, and I know uh, be strengthened, be helped. We're going to be spending a lot of time just praying for each other and really doing a kind of a prayer focus as we're up there that I think will be uh, a help to each of us. So uh, for all of you men, men and boys, plan to come up, even if you can only come up for just a day, plan to come up tonight, Friday or Saturday morning. And if you need directions or anything, reach out to me or Pastor Rob and we would love to help you get squared away on being up at Men and Boys Camp Out this uh, today, tomorrow, and Saturday. Well, for all of us right now, we want to jump into our study in the book of Esther. We are in Esther chapter number nine. Um, I, I, again, I hate doing this big recap, but uh, King Ahasuerus, king of the Media Persian Empire, has a second in command. His name is Haman. Haman hates the Jews because Mordecai, who is a Jew and a gatekeeper within the king's gate, uh, the king's palace, uh, Mordecai won't bow to Haman. He won't worship him as God because he only worships God alone. Um, And so Haman wants to kill all the Jews. So he's made this decree. It's gone out. Mordecai turns to Esther. Esther is his cousin. She is now queen because of what transpired in Esther chapter number one. And so Mordecai turns to Esther and says, I want you to go before the king and beg for our lives. And through the course of a few events, Esther does that. She goes before the king. She begs for their lives. It comes out that Haman is the one who is seeking the destruction of all of the Jews. And he is killed. The the king has him uh, um, hung on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. And then we read yesterday as Esther and Mordecai beg the king for their lives and for the lives of the Jewish people. So a decree is sent out that the Jewish people can defend themselves from the attack that Haman had um, put on the calendar. And so that decree has just gone out. And that's where we come in Esther chapter number nine. So it is a longer chapter So I made the synopsis or the the review a little bit shorter because we're going to read most of the chapter. And then I want us to close out with just a couple of thoughts that I believe will be a help to us today. All right. Esther chapter number nine, beginning in verse number one. In the 12th month, that is the month of Adar, on the 13th day, the time came for the king's command and his decree to be executed. So for the Jews to be killed. On the day that the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, the opposite occurred, in that the Jews themselves overpowered those who hated them. The Jews gathered together in their cities throughout all the provinces of King Ahasuerus to lay hands on those who sought their harm, and no one could withstand them because fear of them fell upon all the people." And all the officials of the provinces, the satraps, the governors, and all those doing the king's work helped the Jews because the fear of Mordecai fell on them. For Mordecai was great in the king's palace, and his fame spread throughout all the provinces. For this man, Mordecai, became increasingly prominent. Thus, the Jews defeated all their enemies with the stroke of the sword, with slaughter, destruction, and did what they pleased with those who hated them." Verse number 11, on that day, the number of those who were killed in Shushan, the citadel, was brought to the king. And the numbers in verse 12, uh, down through verse number 16, they find out uh, who died among the Jews and who or who died among the, uh, the enemies of the Jews and all of the kingdom and everything. But you find out from this that God gave 
an incredible victory. And I'm skipping past it because there's a lot of a lot of names and a lot of numbers that were there. And uh, you can find Haman's sons were killed. Verse 15, the Jews who were in Shushan gathered together on the 14th day of the month of Adar and killed 300 men at Shushan, but they did not lay hand on the plunder. They didn't take everything for themselves. Uh, all of that takes place. Verse number 16, the remainder of the Jews in the king's provinces gathered together and protected themselves and had rest from their enemies and, the, and uh, killed 75,000 of their enemies, but they did not lay hand on the plunder. So basically, God brings a great victory to the Jewish people during this time. Now, <clears throat> what takes place here and, and this... Um, I want us to understand a couple of things. This can be kind of confusing to us in our day and age. Like, how is God giving victory and there's death and defeat taking place? We have to know that um, the way that God works is helping us understand that he will have victory over the enemy. And in this passage, the enemies wanted to kill the Jews. And so they, in self-defense, they retaliate, they, they kill, uh, kind of that kill or be killed mentality. And a great victory is produced for the Jewish people. But then what I want us to see is from verse 18, all the way down through verse number 32, there are some feasts that are, um, that are remembered and some celebrations that are introduced. But I want you to notice how it all wraps up in Esther chapter number 9, verse 30 down through verse number 32. And Mordecai sent letters to all the Jews to the 127 provinces of the kingdom of Ahasuerus with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim at their appointed time as Mordecai the Jew and Queen Esther had prepared or prescribed for them and as they had decreed for themselves and their descendants concerning matters of their fasting and lamenting. So the decree of Esther confirmed these uh, matters of Purim, and it was written in the book. When you go to these verses, what you find taking place is word goes out to the entire kingdom that this is going to be a time to remember and to reflect upon the goodness of God. The feasts that are there, um, verse number 21, they did these to establish among them that they should celebrate yearly the 14th and 15th days, day, 15th days of the month of Adar, that they are to accept the custom of celebration of the victory that God had given. They're to uh, call the remembrance the victory over Haman. They're to call the remembrance and the courage of, uh, um, of Esther and Mordecai to stand for God. But all of this, verse number 28, these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, every city of the victories that God had given. And you can go and I want you to maybe read chapter nine later on your own. But what I simply see and what I want us to understand is when God blesses in any situation in our life, it is wise for us to remember. Hey, let's be honest. All of us can remember the negative. Can you remember all the prayers that God didn't answer? I bet you can. Can you remember the times when it seemed as though God was not there, was not present, was not watching, was not helping? I, I bet you can remember those times. I can remember them in my life. You know, we're, we're pretty good at remembering the negative. And perhaps some of them could have remembered this day and been like, oh, I can't believe that Haman did this and Haman did that. And I can't believe. And they could probably go through and remember the negative. But here's what Mordecai and Esther send word for them to do. Hey, celebrate the victory. In every generation, look back, write it down, have a feast, have a celebration, remember so that your grandkids will look and say, Grandpa, Grandma, why do we do this on the 14th and 15th of the month Adar every year? Why do we do that? Well, we do this, we celebrate because of the courage of Esther to stand against the atrocities of Haman and the courage of Mordecai to stand up. And But children, here's what we do it for. We do it because God gave a great victory. Hey, God met our need. Hey, God did this. And I want to encourage you today 
in your life, celebrate the victories. Look at the good things that God is doing. Don't sit and just sulk and think about the negative. Instead, sit and celebrate about the positive. Hey, today, what are some things that God has done or is doing in your life that you could praise Him for? What are some prayer requests that He has answered? What are some blessings that He has brought? What are some things that you prayed and He answered in a different way, but you are thankful He didn't give you what you requested? Hey, let's be people that constantly look back and remember the goodness of God. Hope that'd be a help to you today. We will see you tomorrow as we close out our study in the book of Esther. Have a great day reflecting on the blessings of God in your life.